What's going on guys? Welcome to another edition of Gear Breaker Nation where we give excellent assessment and reviews. And in this video, I want to sit here and just talk about a conversation with a friend of mine and we were talking about, you know, how to have different variations of vampires in film. Got Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The one thing I didn't like about the movie, it just, it felt like the vampires weren't really relevant. You know, they sitting here running around trying to kill people. It's like, Buffy didn't have to beat that vampire up. I could have beat that vampire up. Like, there was nothing really threatening about him. And, and that's why I appreciated the show a lot more, because they felt more of a menace. At least, to, if not to Buffy herself, at least to other people. So when it comes to vampire films, I love the variations. Do not be afraid to sit there and throw them out. And it's really good if you can give a very vibrant and really good and well thought out reason as to why. Like, the vampires are different. Again, as I said, when I read the books of uh, The Strain, and I started watching a little bit of the show, and in The Strain, the vampires were completely different. They were asexual. They were damn near mindless i mean the guy was controlling them but uh sorry for the spoiler or whatever but uh then you got the fact that they you know their hands like this part of their finger stretched to i guess to allow them to climb things and to cling on to, to pray and stuff they uh shot you know uh just their tongue out with a stinger and they could go like over like feet like their tongue was like really long and it could like project out you know and if they got injured, the little worms that was inside their body would actually crawl out and try to infect another host and turn them into, you know, uh, vampires. They lost their hair. They got ugly. They lost their ability to speak. Their throat swelled up. Like, I love that. And the book actually took the time out to actually explain it, you know? Even, I went on, I, me, me personally, before I read the books, like, years ago, I ended up, I, you know, I was trying to look up different variations of vampires, and I found out about these, and I read up on, like, the biology of it, and I thought it was done really well, and was well thought out. So, when we come up with this, I think it opens up a new gateway for more, more great ideas. Now, the only issue I kind of had with something like that, with the, with the variations, is I was watching The Lost Boys. And uh, Lost Boys is one of my favorite all-time vampire films. I watched the Lost Boys, the uh, the Tribe. I think that's the th uh, the second one. And I watched the Lost Boys, the third one, where I think it's called The Thirst. And the one problem I kind of had with those films is the fact that they were all like they're all in set in the same universe. I believe they all part of the same series, but all the vampires with like types were different. Every movie was like a different vampire type. Like I didn't like that. But think about it, like ability-wise, like you have some vampires that are no stronger than people, normal people, then you got some that are super strong, you know? You got vampires like in Blade that can't fly, then you got vampires that can fly. You got vampires that, you know, don't have super speed, you have some that do. Think of True Blood, they move fast all the time. And you got Eric Norfin, who can sit there and freaking fly, you know? Uh, you got some vampires that can affect people, some that can't. I love the variation. It's like playing with Legos, in my opinion. And every person's, inc you know, incarnation or interpretation of a vampire could, you know, p potentially be limits because everybody would have different uh, things, you know. And I really did enjoy that. Like I said, I just wanted to talk about this because I love variations and I want to specifically focus on vampires in fiction and I really enjoyed that. Um, we'll dabble into a little bit of anime. Check out Helsing. Look how powerful he is. I think he is a bit overpowered. He's overpowered as hell. I wouldn't say I overpowered to a point like that. It's kind of hard to like that character because there's nothing that can threaten him. He has to die multiple times. It's damn near God, you know? You have to kill him multiple times to actually kill him. And don't be afraid to come out with your own little spin on vampires. Um, do they have to necessarily drink blood all the time? They don't have to. Uh, but then again, if they don't really drain some form of life energy or something from another person, are they truly vampires? And have a break of the base episode and talk about, you know, vampires. I do love Celine from Underworld, and I do like their vampires. Uh, guys in the comment section below, just let me know who actually is the best representation of a vampire. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until the next edition of Gear Breaker Nation, keep those gears turning.